In Mark chapter 10, we read about the story where James and John come up to Jesus and they say, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. Now, what do these two guys want? They wanted fame and power and authority and prestige. They wanted all of the earthly glory that would come along with sitting alongside of Jesus, an earthly king, uh, the, the ruler of an Israeli empire. They wanted to be the top men in his government. But before we wag our shame finger at James and John, we have to admit that we're a lot like them because we think about this kind of glory all the time. Wouldn't we like to have power and authority and control? Don't we want to be important and honored? And don't we want to be number one in the center of attention? And aren't we greedy and self-centered in our sinfulness? And what does Jesus have to say about this type of glory? Well, he tells them, whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even as the Son of Man came not to serve, but to be served and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so you see, Jesus equates his glory not with those things that James and John were thinking about, but instead with his crucifixion. And so he asks the brothers, are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? What is Jesus talking about here? Well, first of all, the cup is a reference to God's anger and wrath against sin. It's the same cup that Jesus speaks about in the Garden of Gethsemane just before his arrest, when he says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Now, as far as the baptism that Jesus talks about, normally we associate that word baptism with a cleansing or a washing to be made clean using water, but the word in the Greek language also carries the connotation of being overwhelmed with calamity or being immersed with afflictions kind of like those afflictions that Jesus would endure at his crucifixion. Now, fortunately, Jesus does not have a problem with this role as servant and slave instead of like glorified leader. Even though we don't serve as we should, even though we don't adopt the role of slave as Jesus commands, Jesus still became the perfect servant for us. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And the cross doesn't look good. By all outward appearances, death on a cross would signify a humiliating defeat for God's Son. But in truth, it is the glory of Christ as he brings glory to his Father by earning salvation for all the world through this all-atoning sacrifice, through his suffering, death, and resurrection. It is for this reason that we don't need to seek after glory in this life, because we know that Christ shares with us the spoils of his victory on the cross— and that's even better than the glory of this life. It's life everlasting in his eternal kingdom. 